Hi, and welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And as it happens, today's topic is Scooby-Doo. No, it's not. The topic is the Death House Challenge Rating Breakdown. It's a Dungeon Master Guide for the Curse of Strahd. Hmm, now when I say something like that, a lot of people get confused. But I would like to make it clear. This is a Dungeon Master Guide for the Curse of Strahd Adventure. It's not a player's guide. If you are playing in this adventure, it's going to be full of spoilers. Please go and watch one of my other videos. This is the wrong video for you today. Oh, here we go. The, the characters are going to level up. Uh, the, the character level advancement for this particular adventure has milestones. It's listed on page 211, and it's crazy hard. It's so bonkers hard. It's ridiculous. And I imagine a lot of people get really frustrated because they don't understand how the design team could have possibly come up with something like this. But it does happen. Players' characters are expected to fight and survive at level 1 through most of the house. Most of the house levels, and there are quite a few of them. Multiple levels to survive. And then, of course, <laughs> it's not over. It's not over. I'm sorry, it's not over. Then eventually they will advance to level 2 uh, once they gain access to the secret stairs in area 18, the storage room, and then they can explore the very deadly dungeon below the house. <sighs> okay, alright. Now, <clears throat> I've run this adventure. I know what it's like. I've been there, done that. I've had many dungeon masters talk to me about what the heck to do. On top of this, if that wasn't bad enough, Eventually, the player's characters have to escape the death house, which is even more outrageously difficult. Could it not be any more difficult? Well, apparently it can. <laughs> My recommendations is to adjust encounters down, don't adjust, adjust anything up, and change your monster battle tactics. Okay, this is probably the easiest way to deal with the adventure rather than fiddle around with other things. That's going to be my advice to you today. The player's characters are level 1 for most of the death house levels. And guess what? Almost everything is going to attack them. Almost everything in the house will try to kill them. I would say it's probably smart to start the characters at level 3 rather than level 1, but that's not what this guide is going to do. What it's going to do is it's going to explain how to do it when they start off at level 1. For those of you who want to try to keep it as true to the adventure as possible, and I know there are a few people out there who would like to do something like that. Okay, starting off with problem number 1. Area 11, the balcony, has an animated suit of armour. It's a challenge rating 1. You can find that on page 19 of the Monster Manual. This is a medium to easy battle for 3 to 5 characters. But don't accidentally include Strahd's animated armour in the back of Curse of Strahd. Try to remember to use the Monster Manual version, not the pumped up, pimped out version in the back of the Curse of Strahd. Um, <clears throat> not that any Dungeon Master could possibly do anything like that, could they? <clears throat> animated armour... One of the best tactics I can think of with regard to this situation is to have your animated armor push the characters off the balcony, which will most likely result in at least one unconscious character as they fall 30 feet down to the bottom floor. <laughs> that will shock your players. I would like to point out, though, that even though this seems like a fantastic and clever and entertaining strategy, there are times when you shouldn't do it. I suggest leaving this particular encounter unchanged if the party has five or more players. If they have less than five players, I would suggest that you don't have your monster push the players off the balcony and reduce the hit points on the animated armor. Because you've got to understand, this is not the only creature they have to deal with, and really they have to get past the animated armor. They can't circumvent the animated armor there's no way to do that. Okay, situation number two. Number two is area 14, the storage room. It has a broom of animated attack. It's a challenge rating um, one quarter. 
Uh, you can find that on page 226 of the Curse of Strahd. Oh, okay, it's a very easy fight for a party, okay? A party of adventurers won't really have a problem. But it's a very nasty surprise for one player character uh, if they get unlucky, should I say. <clears throat> Nothing really needs to be changed with this encounter. I Personally, I think this is something you can actually leave alone. There are situations with the the broom of animated attack where it's possible for the broom to TPK or total party kill an entire group on rare occasions where the dice go very very badly and they have a small group of adventurers so groups of like three which I don't advise putting through an adventure like this but if you did have a very small group it is possible that the broom of animated attack could take them out so just bear that in mind if it seems to be going badly for them um, trim things down, unless, of course, you just want to let it lie. Okay, situation number three. This is area 15, the nurse maid suit. It has a spectre. This is a challenge rating one. It's on page 279 of the monster manual. And frankly, as it looks, it seems like it would be perfectly fine in its current form. It's a medium to easy battle for three to five characters, but spectres can kill a level one PC or character in one round with life drain and the damage resistance they have to pretty much everything under the sun. So given that situation, it means that the challenge rating doesn't mean a lot. Okay, I recommend in this situation, Ignore the challenge rating in this case. It means nothing to you whatsoever, simply because this particular monster is vastly more powerful than you really want to deal with. Um, now, in terms of what do you do, I would suggest to you just have the character reduced to one hit point if it is hit by the spectre, and then flee through a wall. It can move through walls, let it do that. Rather than have the character reduced to zero hit points, which will most likely happen at level 1, and then have to make a save to try to not wind up having their maximum hit points reduced, which is like the most horrible thing to have happen, and would certainly make their lifespan as a character incredibly short. Just my advice in terms of how to deal with that situation. If that wasn't bad enough, Situation 4, or Area 18, is another storage room, and it has the Spectre from Area 15. Okay, so the idea is the spectre in area 15 will leave area 15 and go to area 18. <sighs> Who was thinking of this? If the spectre is still alive, I recommend having it not appear again in this location. Why? Because it's scarier. The thing about a monster that can do all sorts of horrible things to players' characters is if they do something, hit and run and disappear and don't get seen again, that's far scarier than doing anything else. You've done your job with that monster. All right. Otherwise, have a ghostly arm reach out of the wall in this location, area 18, towards a player character and then vanish. Okay? And make sure all the players who are in that location see this happen because that will scare them even more. Please do not put two spectres in this adventure. Two spectres is too much for uh, level 1 and level 2. It's vastly more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Okay, so let's deal with uh, problem number 5, or area 20. This is the children's room. It has two children ghosts, or child ghosts. They are challenge rating 4. Yes, you heard me. Challenge rating 4, you can find that on page 147 of the Monster Manual. <sighs> Good Lord. It's in a ridiculously deadly fight for 3 to 5 characters. It's not just deadly, it's ridiculously deadly. It's far beyond deadly. Where in this situation the idea is that the players will hopefully talk to the ghosts, or get possessed by the ghosts, or there might be a fight. A fight might occur. That's the worst case scenario that could possibly happen. Okay? Because no matter what, they are ghosts. And they can do a lot of really bad things. 
and we don't want that to happen so early on in our venture. Maybe later on, but not right now, okay? So my suggestion to you is reducing the power of the ghosts or these ghost children by modifying the stat block is not enough to make them manageable for the party. Just because the book says, okay, if there's a fight, this is the new stat block for these ghosts, it really doesn't do enough to make them less lethal if there is a fight. So we're going to deal with battle tactics. We're going to deal with what we can do as a dungeon master, rather than having to fiddle with the stat block and adjust too many things, how can we play these ghost children in a way that doesn't wind up decimating the party? I recommend having these ghosts use their horrifying visage and then disappear completely. Or, since disappearing from view is like another action and they may have to wait around to do that, you could have them flee through a wall uh, and only need to do this if a fight starts out. If no fight starts out, then you can fall back on talking to the ghosts and possession. And all is sweet from that point on. Isn't that good news? I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so we've dealt with the main section of the house and the encounters that they have to deal with at level one. The dungeon level of the death house and escaping the house will have to be a future video because it's, it's too much content to deliver all at once. And so I would recommend sticking around, watching my channel, you will find I will produce another video that talks about the dungeon level in detail because you will need a breakdown for that. Now if you found this video helpful and informative, fantastic. I have a bunch of videos on how to run the Curse of Strahd. I even have a player's guide on the Curse of Strahd. So you're welcome to throw that in the direction of your players. No spoilers in there. If you're not into the Curse of Strahd and you're looking for something else for either players or Dungeon Masters, I have video content on pretty much everything under the sun. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding something useful. Now if you want to support the channel so I keep doing this, then you can support me on Patreon. You can do that through the affiliate links to Amazon. You can do that through the merchandise shelf underneath my videos. Or you just keep watching my videos, that's fine too. I get, uh, I get something out of that. And make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.